Welcome to an advanced clinical care tutorial. This series of tutorials will cover aspects of caring for patients with complicated HIV and TB disease in Department of Health facilities in South Africa, compiled by the NICD and the National Department of Health and facilitated by Dr. Madeleine Muller, Clinical Advisor for Beyond Zero. This is Module 3 of eight modules on the prevention, identification and management of cryptococcal meningitis. This module will focus on the recognition of the signs and symptoms of cryptococcal disease. The majority of patients with reactivated cryptococcus will be asymptomatic, or they may present with a strange rash. Headache can be nonspecific, as is mild confusion. As patients can present with only a headache or a mild confusion at first presentation, they are highlighted as important screening questions in the algorithm although we have no evidence to inform us of its effectiveness. You may also get the classic meningitis presentations, which includes a very confused patient with neck stiffness, light sensitivity, and nausea and vomiting. Cryptococcal meningitis is a meningoencephalitis with a common complication of an increased intracranial pressure. This increased intracranial pressure is uniformly distributed but can lead to one important focal sign if it affects the sixth cranial nerve. Both diplopia and ophthalmoplegia can be very suggestive. Papilledema is an important sign if you do detect it. And do remember that cryptococcal meningitis is the commonest meningitis implicated in one of the many causes of seizures in the HIV patient. So let us continue our case. Unfortunately, not all patients return for their results, and the CRAG result may be missed. Mr. Zizi never returned and now presents at your hospital emaciated, oral thrush, severe headache, and he's been diagnosed with pulmonary TB at his local clinic and been started on TB treatment. There is no point in doing a test if you cannot act on it, and therefore it is important to trace all patients who has a positive CRAG. Getting multiple numbers of patients when taking the blood increases the chances of success. Cryptococcus not only affects the brain, it can also affect the lungs, which can vary from a mild pneumonia to an acute respiratory distress syndrome. Patients are often short of breath, have fever and a cough, and usually it's misdiagnosed as either PCP or TB. So remember to think of this when your patient is not responding to treatment. Another common presentation is cryptococcus of the skin, and this can present in many different ways. Most commonly is either a papule, a pustule, a nodule, or even an ulcer. It can be mistaken for a whole range of different skin conditions, including molluscum contagiosum or disseminated histoplasmosis. Quite often having a crag or even a biopsy can help you identify the underlying lesion. But you can also get cryptococcus in other organs, although less commonly so. One such is cryptococcus of the bone, most commonly the vertebrae and the ribs. It's important to have a high index of suspicion because it's likely that these will be diagnosed initially as TB. This pelvic x-ray shows a cryptococcoma of the ileum in actually an immunocompetent child. In summary, signs and symptoms are not always helpful in identifying cryptococcal meningitis or disseminated cryptococcus disease. Have a high index of suspicion for disseminated disease in patients with a CD4 count under 100. If your patient is not responding to the usual treatment, remember to include a CRAG in your investigations. Our next module will focus on how you can confirm your clinical suspicions. Thank you.